Good evening. You may sit here and wonder why I'm attempting to be so serious here. Well, it's because I have in front of me, since the paper sound to prove it, uh, a decree from uh, the lawyers. Uh, and the lawyers specifically state that uh, there are certain things I have to introduce right now. So we're going to do that. But first, uh, this is a special presentation of the Bay City Comics line. This is going to be the solo issue involving uh, our good friend Anton. This is a soldier's tale. This is going to be issue four, Call of Duty. Now that we've got that official thing out of the way, we did in fact find Norestra. And I'm reading this directly from the release that I have here. Quote, <clears throat> uh, when you introduce Mr. Norestra, it is uh, in your going to be in your best interest if you introduce him as, quote, an anthropomorphic aficionado, unquote, and proceed as follows normally. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Per my lawyers, this is Norestra, a, quote, anthropomorphic aficionado. I need to have a word with your lawyers. Well, um, again, they just send me the things. I just read them. I'm just the guy behind. I'm just the voice. That's all I am. That's all I do. But anyway, how is everybody doing tonight, fam? Uh, again, as I said, this is a special presentation of the Base City Comics line, a Soldier's Tale comic book, which is the Anton Wolf solo comic. So um, first things first, before we get started, uh, he knows all the inform information that everybody learned uh, ahead of time. Uh, if you have not yet seen uh, issue one of Bay City Comics Volume 5, Sanctuary City, uh, what I need you to do is when you are done watching this tonight, that's right, when you are done watching this, there's going to be a link in the chat. Follow that link to our YouTube channel because that is where we are going to have the premiere on YouTube of Volume 5, Issue 1, Sanctuary City, Picking Up the Pieces. So if you have not yet seen that, Go ahead and hit that YouTube link. Get ready to go. If you have already seen it, click the YouTube link anyway because, you know, it was awesome. It's amazing. And, oh, yeah, there may or may not be 12-year-olds giving otters complexes. I'm not saying that there isn't. I'm not saying that there is. I'm just saying you might want to go click the link because there's at least one savage line from a 12-year-old in there. Yes! Sonora. It was very good, by the way. How are we doing? Um, well, I'm not at a baseball game. I'm not being paraded around at a theme park full of aquatic wildlife. So I'm here with you. So instead, you're being paraded around a theme park full of not aquatic wildlife. wildlife. I feel like I am the uh, wildlife in this picture here. Well, I mean, you said it yourself. You watched the last episode. So, I mean, we, 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 we are one, one animal away from a menagerie at this point. Yeah. So, as you guys can see here on the Roll20 screen, we have our favorite sort of headquarters, the Stormbreaker Technologies building. But uh, that's not where we're going to start here. No, 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 no. Uh, we are going to start, well, we're going to start, watch well, it, you guys see the Viridian Tower. My bad, I didn't change the thing. Anyway, we're going to start here at this lovely little cul-de-sac style house. So, um, Anton, do you want to describe where this house is, what's inside this house, and what's been going on? Well, so, following the events of last episode that I was actually in, that was our season finale there, Anton had asked Dr. Casey to drop him off in Midnight City. For those of you who don't remember what Midnight City is, that was New Orleans. Still named Midnight City, by the way. For now. Well, it got renamed to Midnight City after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Right. But so, um, waiting for Anton there was Dr. Crescent at this house. If you'll excuse me, I'm losing my uh, ability to breathe. As long as you're not using, losing your religion. Anyway, there's Dr. Crescent, for those who don't remember her. And so, making up for lost time, uh, there was a wedding. Uh, along with that, um, one night, 
Anton was awoken by the spirit of King Arthur, telling him that Excalibur was losing its power and he needed to return it to the tomb. So there was a quick jaunt over the pond to take the sword back. Editor's note, see a soldier's tale issue three. And now Anton is, you know, retired from the duty of protecting and serving his country, his company, and now Bay City. So that is where we are going to pick up. Uh, we're sitting here, and uh, it's breakfast time here at the Wolf household. Um, Dr. Crescent is, because even though she's married, she kept her last name because Dr. Crescent sounds much less evil than Dr. Wolf. You're not wrong. Dr. Wolf sounds like she's a lycanthrope. Uh, so Dr. Crescent uh, has uh, obtained a job teaching science at Tulane University. Uh, go Green Wave. And so it's your typical sort of breakfast thing. Uh, just sort of having the conversation and, and you know, you, you've got the morning news on and it's another story of the sweeping implement or the sweeping um, ideologies and implementations that the president elect is going to be putting into practice when he officially becomes sworn in, uh, and the fact that there are already uh, liaisons being sent out to uh, to specific places to sort of get a feel for everything, to get a you know feel for the atmosphere in the um, in the city itself and the number one priority city on this list is the biggest metahuman sanctuary city in the country Bay City so we sort of zoom in and, and there's we get a comic panel there's just sort of this this look of duty on Anton's face and it's sort of just sort of like you know the the I don't want to, but I have to look. Like, you know, the look when you get up and you have to do the dishes? That kind of look? The solution is you don't do the dishes. I'm not going to say there's a pile of baking sheets in my sink right now. To be fair, it's just the baking sheets. Everything else is in the dishwasher. But no, a Anton's displeased with this so-called election of, um, what's his name, Vernon? Andrew Vernon. As a uh, Anton, as we priorly discussed, had worked for Jindine. That's where his suit came from. Um, is not happy about this. So, you know, dishes are being put in the sink, and, and as she's getting ready to leave, uh, Aaron looks around and back at you and says, here's... Nothing I'm going to say that's going to convince you to not make that phone call, is it? No, nothing. <sighs> I thought we were past all this. Oh, we elected this guy. I forget sometimes how easily manipulated the masses can be. Well, it's time to fix another problem, it seems. I'll give the man credit. He has a silver tongue and a snake's reputation. Uh, you worked for him like I did. You know how horrible he is. Exactly. Which is why I was in hiding for so long. So how do we stop him? Well... We can't do it publicly, that's for sure. Got any connections at Jindine? 
the problem is he's seized control of Jendai, and neither you nor I are going to be welcome back there. Well, I'll call Casey and see what he's got. Well, if I don't see you when I get back because you've left, don't get yourself killed while saving the world. I haven't yet. No, but if what you've told me is true about your friend, it's entirely a possibility. Besides, and she looks at, she looks down at you and gives the whole like pregnancy stomach rub. That would be bad for at least two people. Yes. <laughs> so we got a panel of her driving off to work. No, not in a Prius. That's the other side of Midnight City. <laughs> And you then, don't think Casey loaded us up pretty well, though. Oh no! Like, like the only reason we're you're, we're talking in, in normal is because the readers, like, we all know the identities. Like, like you, you guys have, you know, you have full on Black King identities, which means it's going to take something special to unearth who you really are. So uh, we get another panel of Anton putting his plate in the sink and just sort of. Musing over, I should really do that. And then walking over to the phone. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's call Dr. Casey. It takes a couple of rings, but you'd be... if you're calling me, it can't be good. What are you doing about this? Overtly, nothing. I have to play a part. I have to make it look like I'm going to be complying in every step. But I know you. You're not going to comply with any of this. So what are you doing? Well, I did just get off the phone with a representative from the Vernon administration. In a couple of days, they'll be sending someone out to meet with me. And they are going to be trying to get the process started for the CRA. The Cape Registration Act. Yeah, that's a stupid name. Yeah. What yeah, do you so do with the ones who don't wear capes? Well, that's, I mean, we've all seen The Incredibles, Ed and the Mode, no capes! Exactly. Capes are horrible. Capes are horrible. Just don't let Hunter hear you say that. He loves Cape. I'm sure Lutra does too. Yeah. And keep in mind, Cape is also a uh, slang term for for more so heroes, but a general term for anyone who is powered or and or fighting crime. It's still a stupid name. True. As for what I can do about it. I have an idea. Okay. Do you still have a go bag? Yeah. Good. Head to the airport. There'll be a plane waiting. Beep. Uh huh. So Anton's going to grab his bag and uh, head to the airport. All right. So at this point, we now get a two-page spread of the airport. And it's a private jet. It's, you know, it is the Stormbreaker tech jet. You have all seen this before. Um, it's like the third iteration now because I'm pretty sure at least a couple of them have been lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Somewhere off in whatever, uh, whatever uh, plane he's in, the ghost of Phantasm is hating this. <laughs> so at this point, you know, you have a three-hour plane ride to sort of contemplate everything. And, well, back in the other issue, I gave everybody a love letter. And Anton is no exception. And, well, why don't you read your love letter, Anton? Dear Anton, it's been three months since you came back from the future. Three months since you lost part of yourself. 
three months since you left the sword at its rightful home. These past three months have been something else. This is the first time that you can remember not needing to fight or having the real means to. Sure, you've got a bit of gear from Dr. Casey, but the reality is that you're just as content to never have to load a gun again. Unfortunately, that is not the reality that you live in now. Andrew Vernon, the former, former president of Gendine, is about to be sworn in as president of the United States, and you know that there's a war coming soon. He is a human purist, and Bay City is going to be his first target. You've already heard rumblings of new organizations being formed, IBIS, the International Bureau of for the Identification of Superheroes, and Falcon, the Federal Agency of for the Legislation and Control of Outstanding Non-Humans. That's a mouthful. They need to shorten that. <laughs> Even though the official documents state that the L and C stand for location and coordination, you know that's a load of bull. Uh, you have been enjoying your time away from battle, you and Dr. Crescent, or is it Dr. Wolf now that you both know the other exists again? But you know there's a war coming. As you reluctantly walk out of the airport in Bay City, you know that you are needed to be here, but something inside you just wants to return home. Oh, right. So we get sort of that inner monologue happening as you walk off. Uh, the uh, And the reason you're getting off at the airport and not Stormbreaker Tech specifically is because that jet is very noticeable going to the roof. So you're going to have to get yourself there, which happens not a problem. I'm so, sure there's an Uber. Yeah. So, hey, we all recognize this building. Now we have the right building up. We do have the right building up. Uh, you make your way back to the uh, to the regular service elevator that normally takes you up to the barracks. And, well, you're here. What do you do? Uh, so Anton's first going to go up and see Dr. Casey. That's priority one. All right. Well, you get up, elevator dings, you walk in, and the first thing that you notice about the barracks is how quiet it is. Like, there is literally, you hear nothing. Like, usually there was a, a bustle of activity here, whether it be, well, you were used to um, AI Hunter, but whether it was Hub whether it was Ben, whether it was Lucha, there was always something happening. There is no background noise right now, and it's honestly a little disconcerting. So on his, on his way through, Anton's going to kind of walk through there and kind of look at you know, everyone's room, and just so kind of stop by as he's walking through. What you see is the door to three of the rooms are open. One of them, which you knew to be Fant's room, doesn't look like it's ever been utilized at all. It's just sort of sitting there empty. Uh, the room that used to be your room, uh, you know, most of the stuff is gone, but there are still the, uh, the telltale signs of somebody who lived in there. Uh, there are still scorch marks uh, on the floor in uh, Malkir's room. And the door to Lutra's room is closed. I wonder if he's still here. I gotta go see Dr. Casey first, though. So you make your way upstairs to the office. You knock, door opens. And uh, there is the Dr. Casey you remember, uh, known for his love of eccentric sim uh, single-colored suits. Uh, today he is in lime green. You got some sunglasses there, Casey. Um, that's, that's rough to look at. <laughs> Would you rather I wear the yellow one? <laughs> That's better. Nothing but the best for prop comedy here on Bay City Comics, everybody. <laughs> so he sits down, offers you a chair. And goes, well, we're not going to get anywhere with a direct frontal assault. We're going to have to do this from the inside. We're going to have to do it the covert way. So, in a couple of days, there's going to be an, they're going to be opening a branch of Falcon here in the city. For the most part, it's going to be 
just a place where people can go and report, you know, metahuman disturbances and things like that. But the rumor has it to the grapevine. And it's also going to be a place where they're going to be testing some new anti-metahuman weaponry. And I think it would be wonderful if we had a guy on the inside, don't you? Uh, I like where you're going. I so, thought uh, might. So we're sitting in Lutra. Uh, about him. I'm going to need you to look into something for me about that. All right. But before that, he hands you a file. You have a job interview with Falcon tomorrow. And by job interview, I mean you're pretty much going to have the job. You just need to show up and make it look good. This is the identity that in your backstop. Basically, it's your entire backstory. Modify it so they can't trace it back to you. And a new name. Nice. And you look through, and it's basically, you know, your backstory, you know, tactical, you know, weapons, you know, specialist, armor, spe- like the whole shebang. And then you look at the name, and, and your new name for your time for infiltrating Falcon is? Arnold Stein. He goes, pleasure to meet you, Mr. Stein. It's appropriate. Well, I'm not sure how much you're up to date in your language, but uh, Stein does mean stone. I am German. <laughs> Guten Tag. So, I've got you set up in one of these safe houses. And by that, I mean it's an apartment. Like 12th floor. You know, something modest. That'll work. Go um, Go ahead. One thing. I don't have the sword anymore. No, you don't. I thought you might need something. But you're also going to need something compact that you can easily transport. And he hands you just what appears to be just a small little compact ball. And he just looks at you and goes, that would be the automated nanotechnological tactical offensive neutralizer. The Anton? I didn't name it. Who did? Hunter. Okay. When I told him I was working on something for you, he insisted that I name it after you. Do you know how hard it is to come up with an acronym for the name Anton? Yes, yes I do. (laughs) By the way, I suggest you go see him and let him know you have it. I will. For the record, what that can do is basically at your will, it can take the shape of weapons that you need in the, in the current um, so the current situation. And as you, as you can see, it can compact itself to a point where it's easily portable. Nice. So as for the uh, second thing that I need you to look into. Yes. He hits the button, and it goes into that lockdown mode from we've seen before a couple of times. Most notably when uh, Phantasm as Spectre almost decided to kill Dr. Casey couple of different times here. So, you so goes, like every other episode? Pretty much. I'm worried about the trap. Oh? I don't know what, but he hasn't been himself. Who has he been? Honestly, he's acting more like not here than anything. Oh god, that's horrible. Yeah, but he's lost his jovialness 
he's basically lost his smile. And the only thing I can think of is he started to change after he started going back down to the docks that he used to work at under the Brandon. Hmm, interesting. I would go take a look myself, but no one's going to give me any information. Kind of well known. Well, only people around here who've seen me have been in some sort of suit. Right. You won't be known. So you can go look around. Not to mention the fact that I believe you used to work security then. I did. All right, I'll take a look down at the docks, see what I can find. Thank you. Sanson's not going to stop to see Lutra on his way out. He's going to just head straight to the docks at this point. Okay. Um, I don't have a, a, a docks scene ready here. I know I should have, but we're just going to stick to this because, well, half the time I'm on the wrong screen anyway. So you know how to get down to the docks because, well, you used to work there. I believe that's where we started this nightmarish train. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. So it takes you a little while to get down there. Um, and well, you there, you get the sort of background noise and background music. Which, yes, I have background music, though. I don't have the picture, but I have the music. Well, I mean, it's something. So, it doesn't take you long. You pretty well know the area and where um, he was. However, what I do have is I do have the map we use for the docks section. So, uh, yeah, you're down in the sea cliff section. So you make your way back down there. And, you know, it's a typical day at the docks. You know, people working their butts off. Uh, the whole thing. So what do you do? So at this point, I want to head back to, you know, the the dock where I was performing security for and just kind of snoop around it. All righty. So, uh, how are you snooping around? You just sort of casually looking? You taking your time to look at things? Yeah, just casually looking. Just looking right, at right. things. Looks odd. All right, give me a perception check, then. Um, so, you're looking around, and for the most part, things don't look that odd to you. But... You, you sit there and, you, and you're, you're sort of looking around it, and everything seems like it's normal, copacetic on the up and up. But because the only reason you're able to notice something is a little weird is because you've had ex a little bit of experience with this before. You've seen somebody move at this rate of speed before. It's almost too fast for the eye to see it, but some of the crates, you look, and there's five crates. And then you look back up and there's four crates and it doesn't look like anybody's moved. Then he's three crates. So someone or something is zipping around like a madman, moving crates. So I'm going to... Whatever. I'm going to step into this, what would be his path, since I know kind of roughly what it would be and, and stop. Uh, he reacts. He is able... Well, let me roll... just lands like right on you and just sort of stops and just sort of sitting there just sort of looks up oh, oh sorry about that man didn't see you there oh where did you come from oh. hi friend what's going on down here at the docks today just trying to get some work done, man. Did you have to run in front of me like that? 
Well, that was the only way I knew I'd be able to get your attention. You, you know, you, you could have said, hey, or hello. That would have worked. And you wouldn't have heard it. What do you mean I wouldn't have heard it? I was walking by you, I would have heard it. You're moving at speed that you wouldn't have heard it. I'm moving at my normal speed. What are you talking about? No, you're moving at superhuman speed, man. <laughs> you're joking, right? Just answer some questions. And I'll go. And why should I answer questions to you? You're not my boss, you're not the police. Go to hell. I have work to do. You'll answer them because if you don't, I will have to do mean things to you. Hold on a second. Make an intimidate check. <laughs> Clearly Dark has touched my dice. Apparently, he just looks at you and laughs. He goes, <laughs> Well, I, I suspect you might want to do something. I don't think it will be me. So if you'll excuse me, I've got work to get back to doing. And he literally I'm... sits off. I miss my armor. So Anton... Go ahead. Anton's going to pull the orb out and, and try it out here on this, this guy. He's going to try to uh, whip his leg. and You whip it real good. So what I'm going to give you here is you're not trying to hurt him. You're trying to faceplant him. So, because of the nature of what's going on, he's technically not very affected by the electricity part of the whip. But he's still affected by, you just whipped his leg. The only problem here is he zip, he's been zipping back and forth with these crates full of fish. So you've got him, but you got him with a crate full of fish. It is now raining trout. Oh, Lucha would be so happy right now. Are we going to have a discussion now? Dude, you know how much is it going to cost? I Fine. don't care. Hold on. He just picks up all the fish and puts them back in the crate. Dusts I didn't off. see the fish. I saw nothing. Just sell them. You're good. What do you want? There's something fishy going on down here. He just looks and goes, If you tripped me up to make a bad pun, I'm going to shove a lightning bolt so far up your... Then we, get, then we just, And then that's where the comic panel ends. We go to the next page. No, if I was just down here to make fish puns, I would have brought my friend. Your friend. But I've heard her... You've heard of water skiing, right? His eyes go wide. Like, he is petrified right now. Tell me what you know. Look, man. I'm not the guy you want to talk to. I'm just, just, just trying to make some money. Look, if, if you want to talk to somebody, go find Barry. He, 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 he's, the, he's the one you ought to talk to, man. Just, 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 don't, don't, just, just, just don't say anything. Please, I, I can't lose this job. I can't. You're fine. And he zoop, zips off. Anton looks down at the orb and is like, I like this thing. <laughs> I love the fact that you crit on your first roll with it. That's a good feeling. So, so you uh, have Ant a name. Yeah, Anton's going to go find Barry now. How are you finding him? Um, that's a good question. He ran off without telling me where he is. Oh, eh, I should work on my interrogation a bit more. Yeah, probably. Uh, so Anton's going to kind of walk down the dock a bit further and see if he can find 
someone yelling for Barry, a Barry shop of some sort, or, you know, ask someone, you know, where's Barry? Well, you're not going to hear, well, if you might be able to hear people calling for Barry, first of all, give me a perception check. Now give me a set of five numbers consecutively on a D20. Uh, six to ten. You actually hear somebody calling for Barry. <laughs> you hit the 25% chance. It's my lucky night. Apparently it this is. And badly. Still. Probably. So, so Anton is going to walk towards that direction. Trying so, to find Barry. Barry is basically one of the, the shipping foremen. And he is just sitting there. He he definitely, he looks, I mean, I'll give you this for free because you are as well. He definitely has that ex-military officer sort of attitude to him. He's very much got this sort of arty army flair almost. But she's just, you know, he's probably early, uh, late 30s, early 40s, maybe a little younger, barking orders, you know, just generally being an angry foreman. Lovely, it's the foreman. These guys are always fun to deal with. Does Anton have any sort of fake identification on him or, well, forged identification at this point? He has got... He has got the government ID that you were given by one Dr. Casey. It does have a Falcon identification on it. Hey, Barry. He looks. Not one of my workers. Don't care. This is Falcon. You and I need to talk. Falcon. Ah, uh, and, uh, and you just see, like, you get the comment panel, just like the, the, he's definitely swearing. And he's like, he looks, looks over someone, take over for a minute. Begrudgingly grumbles and walks over. Sees your badge, looks up. What? You and I need to have a chat inside. I can assure you, officer, everything we're doing here is up and up. That's not what I've seen. You do realize that the president even hasn't even sworn in yet, and you're already being thorn in the side here. Just get in there. So they go up to you go up to an or go up to a little office that he's got. Slams the door. What do you want? I'm not here to ruffle any feathers. I'm not here to take part in any sting operations. What do you know about water skiing? I know that for a time it was one of the more popular videos on YouTube. I know that's the first time I've ever seen that otter happy not wearing an illusion. You know this otter? He used to work down here. Did he work for you? Worked for the company I worked for. A couple of days he worked under me. One of those per diem guys. Man, could he catch fish. All we had to do was pay him in a couple of trout, and we were good. You know, Have you if, you, seen him? if you know him, you might want to teach him what a fish stick is. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's been down here off and on recently, though. Hasn't been down here a whole lot in the past month. Anything unusual about him? Yeah, he kept talking about how he needed to finish some song or something. It was a little weird. That sounds like him. Kept saying how nobody believed him and the need to prove, and I don't know, I don't pay attention to half the stuff that comes out of his mouth anyway. 
Well, thank you. Now, get these guys registered so I don't have to come back down. Get who registered? The guy loading your fish crates. What guy loading the fish crates? I've got a ton of people loading the fish crates. You're going to have to be a little more specific, and for what reason? The one doing it at lightning speed? Give me a perception check. As you say that, you definitely... His face doesn't go pale, but you notice a sort of gulp. Don't make me come back here. No, sir, not at all. Also, you might ought to get him an ice pack. I, I didn't do it. You're hurting my workers. I just asked him a question. He fell down. I bet he did. I told him I have the energy drink. So that Anton's going to head back up to uh, to see if Lutra is in. Okay. So you make your way back to the barracks. And uh, before you manage to get yourself into where Lutra is, you are met at the elevator by a very, very angry looking 12 year old. Oops. And you're just here to get in like the, the guilty like foot tapping. You can't even come stop by and say hi? I'm sorry. I had to run off real quick for something. After I went through all the time to name that specifically for you? I, mean, I love it. it. It took care of something critically for me. Well, at least it works. It's it's quite awesome. I'll have to see what else it can do. Do you know do you know how hard it was to be able to actually get to the point where it would work for somebody else and not me? Well, I mean No, I don't. I, I know nothing about this technology. Oh, well he he just looks and goes and he uh he basically if you read the last, if you saw the last issue, the same thing happens. Like a little bit of nanotech comes out of his fingers, forms into another ball in his hand, and where you created the whip, he creates a boomerang because he's a small child and it's a boomerang. Why do you have a yellow boomerang? It's not yellow; it's metallic. So you're carrying around a blue boomerang. He just bumps you on the head with it. Ow! Just, yeah. How blue is that? It being blue is going to be your head, black and blue. Fine. I'm sorry. It's it's awesome. Thank you. Now I need to go see. Luke. <laughs> Good luck. He hasn't been he hasn't been very nice recently. I think he might be mad at me. He's probably not mad. He doesn't cook anymore. Heck, he doesn't even hug anymore. You have to remember, it's been a rough time period of some undiscernible... It's been a lot. But he doesn't hug anymore. He won't even talk to me. I'm pretty sure he's mad at me. I'm sure he's not mad at you. Well, I don't want to see him right now. Okay, fine. Go play your he stops you know, upstairs. game console. So yeah, he, he stomps upstairs and you are free to go into the barracks. So I'm going to head up to uh, my, my room first. Okay, you're in the room that used to be yours. I'm just kind of looking around. It's like, Give me a perception check. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, you're in, in the room you were in. What do you do? Yeah, just kind of looking around, seeing... See all the, the holes and doors and 
There's apparently definitely some Casey pebbles in the corner. Casey apparently stored all the, the broken doors in the room after I left. Yeah. That's a lot of doors. It's kind of adorable. That was bad. Yes, it was. <laughs> so, <laughs> do that. Anton's going to kind of walk over to Phantasm's old room and just kind of just sit there for a minute because he's still got the ring that he's left with. That's not the same without him, is yep. And so. for kind of a, as you sort of shuffle with the uh, with the ring, we get a really cool comic panel look of Anton sort of standing in the room, and then sort of standing right next to, sort of hovering over his shoulder, is just sort of like a ghostly image of Phantasm, and just a really sort of awesome, sort of cool, somber looking picture in a comic panel. And Anton definitely gets the feeling that. It's the it's the same sort of feeling he had when like whatever was in his head was talking to him. Like there's something there that's not actually there. Not again. No. Okay. <laughs> Lutra. Anton goes and starts banging on the door. Lutra, are you in there? So you hear him moving, or you hear movement in his room, but for a moment, like, I'd say about three minutes, nothing happens. And then, like, I'm assuming you sit there and knock again. He finally... Oh, of course, yeah. Finally, like... Finally, just kind of, like... Kind of gruffly gets up, opens the door, is like, What? It... Oh! Oh! Uh, hi, Anton. Hi, Lutra. Is it, is it, so he's got the door open barely, so just enough so his head can stick out. When he did, it, his face looked not really happy about being disturbed, but he sees you and just kind of calms a little bit. It looks more like confused. Like, I wasn't expecting to see you again. Uh, how, how you doing? I'm okay. I'm kind of worried about you. How are you doing? Huh? I'm fine. Um, just, uh, you know, been, uh, working on things, you know, um, what you doing here? You back? I'm, mm, sort of, I've, I've got to leave town again here in a moment, but, uh, oh, you'll see me. Oh, okay, um. I, I, it's been, it's been a busy three months. Yeah. Had to take care of some stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's been a busy three months indeed. So, so you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna like stay around for for dinner or anything? I can stay for dinner. Lutra actually looks slightly more disappointed when you say that. Is like, oh, okay, I, uh, okay, I, I'll, 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 you know what? I'll, I'll make, I'll make something for us tonight for for dinner. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't. Uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be great. Yeah, it, it, you know what? It, it'll be the best thing ever. Um, but, um, I'm, I'm a little busy right now, so, uh, why don't we catch up then, okay? What are you busy with? I'm working on my music. Uh, you know, just, just, I've been trying to get this, this done. And, yeah, it's almost done. Um, I'm, I'm really close, I know it. Uh, it should, shouldn't, shouldn't be much, much longer. Is it done like, um, knock your Sudokus? <laughs> Dead Pez looks up at you and is like, No, it's much further along than that. <laughs> as you, as we get a zoom in to the coffee table behind Anton's shoulder, that's got a Sudoku page, a uh, Sudoku book. Open with just burnt chart, different char marks on different pages. <laughs> All right, Lisa, I'll see you for dinner in a little bit. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, good, good, good seeing you again. Yeah, bye. And with that, Lucha really quickly closes his door, and you hear him lock it. <laughs> All right. After that conversation, Anton, go ahead and give me an insight check. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you don't notice crap. 
Shocking. <laughs> so Anton's going to head up to, uh, to talk to Casey real quick. Um, also, go ahead and give me another perception check. You, you think there's something going on, but it also could just be, you know, your eyes playing tricks on you because you haven't seen Mutra in a while, so it's probably nothing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. So up to Casey's You make your way back up to Casey's office. Is He's, he actually here? He is, and he is still in the lime green. I'm not breaking the sunglasses out again. Just so you, know, you don't wear your sunglasses uh, at night? No, not tonight. Only for the musical episode? Yeah, we'll, we'll save it for that one. So, Casey, I got some information on Lutra. <laughs> You did. Oh, so I went down to the docks, startled a few people, and um, he's working on a song. Song? Oh, is he still up all about that person that he says existed that never existed? Wait, what do you mean? Person who existed that never existed? He keeps insisting about writing a song for somebody who I've never heard of. That can't be right. I have his ring. You have a ring, but... I mean, if you guys met him, that's one thing. But... I did my digging. The person in question died in a plane crash over the Bermuda Triangle like 10 years ago. Yeah. So there's no possible way he could have interacted with Lutra because 10 years ago, Lutra wasn't on this planet. Five years ago, Lutra was still in the ruins of uh, Utopolis as a lab experiment. So, that's impossible. Well, nothing's impossible when you're messing with fate. But initially, he was all excited about it, and then as the couple of months have gone on, he's just, he barely ever comes out. I mean... The past couple of weeks, it's all been... Every night, I have to go back upstairs and convince Hunter that he hasn't done anything wrong. He, he swears up and down that he did something that made Lutra mad at him. Well, Lutra's going to cook dinner tonight. You know how many times he's said that in the past couple of weeks and hasn't done it? Well, I'm here. I'll drag him out of his room if I have to. Assuming he hasn't locked the door. Has that stopped me before? Before, you were either in a giant suit of armor or a giant rock man. Now, you have a nanotech marble. The whip's already been useful. Oh, you made a whip out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like I said, it, it, it responds to what you need. I'm sure I can find a way to open the door with this if I need to. For the record, I'm not overriding the door lock with the AI, because that would be an invasion of privacy. That's fine. I'll override it with something else. Fair enough. I've got to prepare some stuff for this visitor in a couple of days. What do you know about the visitor that's coming? I know that he is coming as a representative of the Vernon administration. 
specifically, he works under Senator Stanley Harris, uh, a California senator. And uh, he introduced himself to me as Jay Pontia. Sounds like a real douchebag. Well, with a name like Pontius. <laughs> I'm going to grab a couple things and then I'll meet y'all down for lunch or dinner, I guess. All right. <laughs> so are they storyline relevant things or are they just things? Just things. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and hit the fast forward button to it's right around dinner time. Has Lutra decided to come out and actually cook? Okay. Okay. Make another perception check as Lutra is cooking. It. Okay, make another insight check. You are too busy studying your files, so you can really become Arnold Stein. I will pump you up. You up. <laughs> wait, so wait, if you're Hans, who's Franz? <laughs> I am Hans and Franz. <laughs> Be right back, being Hans and Franz as NPCs. <laughs> I'm Franz! So An Anton's going to finish eating and then go see if he can talk to Lutra one more time before he heads out for the evening. Well, I was getting ready to head out for the evening. just wanted to say goodbye and just see how you're doing. I know it's been, you know, it's been weird up here. Three months. I know malkir has gone. I've been gone. Phantasm's gone. Yeah. That was good seeing you too. You okay? Mm, was it something I said? Still doesn't matter. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Lutra? You want to talk about it? Your eyes are red. The last time you were like this, I had to pull you off a dead man's corpse. Your your eyes are red. My eyes are red. What do you, What do you mean? My eyes are red. And Anton kind of grabs him and sticks him in front of a mirror. Ah! Hey! Hey! Put me down. Okay. 
can't find my eyes are red. What about it? Like I said, the last time your eyes were this red, I had to pull you off a guy that was dead. <laughs> he kind of like pushes you away from him. Well, well, clearly I'm not doing that now. So what's up? Nothing's up. Uh, I'm going to ask you to make yet another insight check here. This one, this one's slightly easier. Nope, that doesn't help. <laughs> My God. Dear Lord. Dark, I know you did it. Dude, use a hero point at this point, for God's sakes, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've got a spare one. I'll use it. Okay. So, you beat the ten to remember this. The guy you tricked down at the docks also had red eyes. Wait a second. You've got red eyes. The guy at the docks had red eyes. Lucha, like, looking flustered at you, like, pushes you away, like, like, just leave me alone, goodness. I'm fine. Clearly you're not fine. Have you been eating fish down at the dock lately? <laughs> huh? Yeah. I mean, sure, of course. I always eat. Actually, I really haven't been eating. Well, well, yeah, I mean, couple. Yeah. What? The f Why? Don't worry about it. Good yeah. night, Lutra. Yes. Good. Good, good night, Anton. Just good luck. Thanks. That he kind of gives like a, a half-hearted like when I say wave, I don't mean a wave goodbye. I mean like a kind of like a go away kind of thing. As he goes into his room again. Yeah, my move. More like the overhand, just like you know, fling you away kind of thing. So Anton's gonna run back up to see Casey before he heads out. Same line, green shirt. Yeah. You know, at this point, he's in the penthouse, not uh, in his office. Yeah. So he's actually in um, casual dress down, like a t-shirt and PJ pants. Oh, it's not lime green anymore. Nice. There's something fishy going on at the docks, Casey. Hunter just looks up by you. It's the docks. Of course there's fish happening there. I mean, yes. But one of the workers had the same red eyes that Lutra's got. Oh. And he was a a superhuman. As far as my intelligence knows, there's no metahumans working. Well, this guy was loading fish in crates. I used the whip to slow him down a bit and talk to him. Hold on, He's not registered. Here. Okay. He just looks and goes, I can't do that. That can't be right. But he looks at you. You know something? That makes a little sense. I didn't think of it before because it didn't make sense in my head. There was no way that could have possibly been it. But I think... I think I know what Flutra's problem is. Besides the fact that his friend is dead and no one remembers Yeah, besides that. Good, because... Uh, what's wrong with him? Well, if what you tell me is true, 
I'd want someone more experienced than me to confirm it. But I think he's showing signs of addiction. To what? Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, we know it's not fish. That's No, he was always addicted to fish. Yeah, that's not new. <laughs> Do you just hear this addiction? Oh. Get yeah, caught addiction, exactly. Let me I actually I actually have to roll Hunter's sheet here for a second. Remembering he was hooked up to the internet. Nope. Even with eidetic memory. Nope. Well, if it's something from the docks, I guess... I guess it means it's time for you to shift uh, apartments. Yep. I'll be headed out. Remember the warehouse that I had by the docks? Yep. And there's an apartment complex attached to it. Let me guess, I've got the keys already in the car. He goes, he goes over to a drawer, opens one up, shuts it, opens another one, shuts it, opens a third one, ruffles through, grabs something, tosses you a key ring. You still use regular keys? I find that odd. Oh, the apartment complex does. Congratulations, you're the new landlord. Great. Half the people in the docks who work at the docks live there. If something's going down. Alright. I'll head down there. Also, if it makes you feel better, I mean, I'll let you use one of the cars. I, I mean, which, do I get to pick which car? Which one did you want? The most inconspicuous one. He looks over at Hunter. Hunter, Dewey. I don't know. He didn't come and thank me for his weapon. I don't think we should. I, I thank think, you I for think, the weapon, think, you little brat. What was that? What did you call me? You heard me. Uh... I thank you. It took me a minute. I had to go run an errand so that Lutra would stop being a little... Does a 17 hit you? Uh... Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to make you roll a toughness save, because this is more for effect, but you get just smacked in the arm by the boomerang as it just... (laughs) Alright, that's it. And Casey looks like you're not fighting in the penthouse. You're not fighting at all. You're going to your room, young man. Enough of that. And Hunter just looks at him and goes, I can shut him off any time. Sometimes just, you know, sticking his tongue out, <laughs> making faces at him. And you stop instigating or you are going to get the pink Cadillac. Uh, the pink? Oh, man. Not the pink. Anything but that. I'll I'll leave him alone. So he throws you keys. So the next image you see is Anton down in the garage hitting the uh, boop, 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 the lock button, boop, trying to figure out which car. I mean, now this is one of those garages that you see on TV, Doctor Casey. You're pretty sure he has a car to match every suit. Because you've seen the salmon the one. Lime you've green. seen the lime green one. There's a teal one. There's a bright yellow one. It takes you a little while. Uh, 
but you finally, finally are able to come across the car that he gave you. And it is the exact opposite of what you wanted. It is the most gaudy, noticeable thing that he has in this garage. And that's saying something since he's in a lime green car. <laughs> well, at least it's. I'm going to have to wash this thing every five minutes. This is horrible. <laughs> That is a gold-plated car. Google is an amazing thing. You, sir, have had your Google license revoked. <laughs> so you open the car, you get in, and it's an automatic start. And right next to the start button, you see a button that just says, plating off. Yeah, we're pushing that. And we get a panel, a comic panel, just all the gold just sort of reverting, and it's just a normal black car. It's literally a nanotech illusion. <laughs> nice. Right, nice job, Casey. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I could have some fun with this. You could. <sighs> but we are going to fast forward to the next day. And your orientation slash interview. The interview is nothing of note. It's more of a filling out the paperwork type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, we get to the, uh, it's, you know, a regular reception lady. Kind of looks like, if you've ever seen Criminal Minds, kind of looks like the actress who plays Penelope. The computer nerd. Yeah. So, it kind of looks a little bit like her. Giving you a tour of the Falcon facility. And she's, we, we, we zoom in about halfway through as you're getting to where you're going to be assigned to work, which is the battle suit testing facility. And here's where we're going to be testing our battle suits. Now, we've got a couple of different people here to, to test them. And, and she looks around, she's, she's pointing them out to you. And they are, there is a dude who is like 6'6", 350. There's another dude who's like 5'4", like 190 pounds. Like, there is like four or five different people, and they are all range of shapes and sizes. And, goes, and, and she goes, and here is uh, the, the uh, battle suits we're going to be testing. And he goes, the only one we sort of, we only have a couple right now uh, in, in no, she shows these two battle suits. Um, one of them sort of looks not quite Hulk clustery, but definitely uh, a bit thicker on the battle suit. And the other one seems more like, you know when Iron Man has just like different parts of the suit attached to him? Yeah, we have that. So yeah, we have these two. So right here, she points the big one. This is the claw, the combat logistics assault weapon. And she goes, and this is the the talent, the tactical assistance light ordnance neutralizer. Yeah, we're good at naming things here, aren't we? She goes, for some reason, the president wants everything bird related. Hence Falcon. Did you know he came up with the name Falcon first and then literally hired a group of people to backronym it? Not surprised. So, this is what we have. So, um, if you want to get going, uh, you, uh, we've already got you punched in. If you want to start going, you certainly can. Uh, but welcome aboard. We, we thank you for helping us out here uh, at, at the Falcon facility. And uh, we hope that this is the beginning of not only a long career for us, but a long career for you. And uh, we hope that we never have to use it because there's no incidents ever in the city. Yeah. So, Thanks. which one do you want to try on? For the record, the Talon looks like it's, it's too small to fit you. It looks like it's a child's toy. And the claw looks like the big dude was wearing it. Is there a poster in the background of the Mark III, which is Anton's? <laughs> there, you, 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 uh, on the way in, you saw like the history of battle suits, and the Mark III was definitely there. And, and Anton's just like, I want to try that one back on, please. 
That was nice. Anton's gonna try on the the, the smaller one first. Okay. Oh, also, just just note of reference: Anton has uh, taken the nanotech orb and kind of embedded it into his shirt just by mashing it in. It's now kind of a vest. Fair enough. So you go and you 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 start to you pick it up and you start to put it on like it's like you know when you're an adult you try to put on like a child's glove and it's not fitting, not fitting. And then you sort of push it on, and it, and it, it adapts to your hand and fits. And this is a shock to you. Because as far as you knew, the only person in the world who had access to nanotechnology was Dr. Casey. This shouldn't fit like this. Something's very wrong. And the final closing scene of this comic is we're going to have fast forward a couple days. You're sort of getting used to everything, your, your tactical practice and all that. But uh, everyone at the facility is sort of stopped when all the TV monitors um, show this press conference. And for those who haven't seen it yet, uh, it is this woman giving the press conference. So she comes up there and she goes, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to hear the full speech, you can do so right after this by going and following uh, our YouTube premiere over on uh, our YouTube channel. The link's going to be in the chat here in a minute. But the last couple of panels, just Anton listening to this speech given by Carla Bryce, the CEO of Viridian Incorporated. So he now knows that it's so totally not a space laser, but it's to- so totally a space laser. I want a space laser. <laughs> So, again, if you have not done so already, hit the follow button here on Twitch. Hit the follow button on YouTube. Follow the link in the chat because that is where we are going to be day premiering uh, the uh, episode that we aired on Sunday night, picking up the pieces. Uh, And it's actually going to segue quite nicely into what you saw here. So go ahead. Go watch that. That's issue five, volume five, Sanctuary City, issue one, picking up the pieces. This has been a special presentation of Bay City Comics. A Soldier's Tale. This has been issue four, Call of Duty. Uh, so on behalf of Norestra, and with the special cameo appearance by OPT Lawyer, uh, I am TGE, reminding everybody to keep hailing. Have a great rest of your night, everybody. We'll see you back here on Sunday for volume five, issue two. <laughs>